OTL one trial learning involves a change of behaviour that occurs with only one powerful experience. This could be the development of phobia as a result of a traumatic episode when you're a child. More about this in area study number two, mental health. In area study number one, learning, we're focusing on taste aversions that occur as a result of one trial learning. So taste aversion is a condition response in which a person or animal establishes an association between a particular food and feeling ill after having it in the past. Key point is the association is usually a result of one single unpleasant experience, i.e. food poisoning, gastro type symptoms. Thus, the particular food will be avoided in the future. It could be fish after eating dodgy fish, maybe a dodgy pie, something like that. So OTL is sort of classical conditioning, but not. So what do we mean by this? Well, let's talk about the similarities of OTL and classical conditioning. Both involve a pairing of two previously unrelated stimuli, i.e. a neutral stimulus and an unconditioned stimulus. For instance, if you actually like fish, then originally fish is a neutral stimulus because it doesn't evoke that aversive response. If you pair that fish with contamination because you've left it out of the fridge for a couple of days, that's the association, that's the pairing, i.e. contamination with fish. Both involve a reflexive response. For instance, if you have an aversion to fish, it's not a conscious thing to think, all right, I'm going to look and smell at that fish and now I'm going to make myself feel ill. It's a reflexive process controlled by the autonomic nervous system. And both involve passive learning, I, as opposed to active learning, because it's not, again, based on consequences, which is what we have with operant conditioning. So in terms of differences between OTL and CC, classical conditioning by definition requires repeated pairings of two previously unrelated stimuli. So for Pavlov and the dog, pairing the sound of the bell with the meat seven times before the association is made. With OTL, we only need one pairing, i.e. contamination and fish. Now after that one unpleasant experience, we've got a taste aversion to that fish. Time lapse, well, in terms of classical conditioning, we ring the bell first, and then just seconds later, we bring out the meat so that the animal can make the association. With OTL, if you eat dodgy fish, and let's say it doesn't smell dodgy, we cover it up with heaps of garlic, etc. it'll take you a couple of hours before it goes through your system and you're decorating the garden. So there's a bit more of a time lag in terms of the association with OTL. It's a lot easier to extinguish behaviour that's been classical conditioning, i.e. Pavlov and the dog. Pavlov rang the bell, no meat. Rang the bell, no meat. After doing this five or six times, the conditioned behaviour was extinguished. The dog no longer salivated to the sound of a bell. Whereas with OTL, uh, I'll give you a personal experience. I had a bad experience with tequila about 25 years ago when I was in my teens and I still have an aversion to it despite being regularly exposed to it at parties etc. Generalisations, much more likely to generalise behaviour that's been classical conditioning. So for instance let's say Pavlov and the dog, the dog might salivate to similar sounds to the ringing of a bell like a phone or a doorbell etc. Whereas we're less likely to generalise behaviour with OTL so I'm fine with gin, ouzo, etc. It's only tequila stimulus discrimination that I have an issue with.